Supreme Court started hearing arguments about the controversial Safety Act on Tuesday. 64 state's attorneys filed a lawsuit questioning the constitutionality of that law and changing the cash bail system in the state. The bill was supposed to take effect on January 1st, but it has been on hold after a temporary restraining order and injunction. To help us understand all of this, David Franklin is an associate professor in DePaul's College of Law. He's here to break it all down. Professor Franklin, first off, thanks for being with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So the court heard arguments from both the state and the challengers of the act yesterday. A lot of discussion about the language of the act, how it's interpreted, specifically the meaning of bail in the Constitution. Can you kind of walk us through in layman's terms? What's the crux of this? Sure. So uh, the Safety Act um, eliminates monetary bail in Illinois. Uh, because the General Assembly was was concerned that that institution of monetary bail was being uh, abused, that poor people were were uh, you know being detained for a long period before trial simply because they didn't have the money to post a bond. Uh, but the case, as you say, in front of the Illinois Supreme Court is not about whether getting rid of monetary bail is good policy. Um, it's about whether it's unconstitutional. So the state's attorneys who brought this court challenge say, that the language of the state constitution uh, means that judges in Illinois have to have the power uh, to impose monetary bail um, as a condition of pretrial release. Um, I think the defenders of the Safety Act have the better of the argument here. Uh, what they point out is that the constitution uh, grants rights to criminal defendants, not to prosecutors. So what the constitution in essence uh, says is um, that uh, if you're a criminal defendant, you're entitled to bail uh, so long as you assure the court that you'll show up for trial. And bail doesn't have to be monetary bail. Mm -hmm. um, it can be enforced in other ways. So, yeah, what the legislature did here was to give criminal defendants more rights than the Constitution requires uh, them to give. Uh, to those defendants. Uh, but the legislature does things like that all the time. Obviously, they're looking into the constitutionality of this, but the real world impacts, how people view it, how people make their decision on whether this is fair or not, is the question centrally of are we favoring people who have means versus people who don't have means? Essentially, for folks who are watching this and trying to understand it, that is sort of the fairness question at play, right, Professor? Yeah, that's right. Um, I, you know, the, the, the bail system, um, in, in the view of the General Assembly, uh, uh, disproportionately harms uh, poor people um, and uh, at least statistically disproportionately harms uh, pe people of color as well in the state. So in the end, I think the, the issue in this case is going to boil down to whether the things that the General Assembly has put in place as substitutes for monetary bail, things like mm -hmm. electronic monitoring or home supervision, whether those are constitutionally sufficient uh, to ensure that the defendant shows up for trial. And I think it's it's hard to imagine that the Illinois Supreme Court is going to second guess the General Assembly about those kinds of questions. So Kankakee County State's Attorney Jim Rowe, one of the attorneys who opposed the act, said that the people should vote on it on a ballot on election day, meaning take it out of the hands of the Supreme Court. But also uh, Attorney General Kwame Raoul, who appealed the ruling that this was unconstitutional, is set to endorse Brandon Johnson today. From the political and law side, how do you think this hearing is going to impact the April 4th runoff in the city, if at all? Well, obviously, crime is a central issue uh, in the mayoral election. Um, I, I'm not a political handicapper, so I don't know how that's going to play out. Um, but, you know, if, if people view uh, the abolition of cash bail as a public safety problem, then maybe that'll play out at the polls. Um, the studies that I've seen, and I'm also not a criminologist, uh, suggest that the elimination of cash bail probably won't have much effect uh, on either public safety or on the ability of, of defendants or the willingness of defendants to show up for trial. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the public won't view it that way. And last question here, uh, the, always the question we end with is what's next? It's essentially in the hands of the Supreme Court. We should expect something from them, what, this spring or summer, something like that? If not sooner, they did take this case up on an expedited basis because mm -hmm. the statute was scheduled to take effect uh, on January 1st. Uh, so they may issue a ruling um, uh, pretty soon. Um, and it's, it's also possible that what they'll say 
is that the state's attorneys lack what is called standing to even bring the case, mm. in which case the uh, the challenge would be dismissed on that basis. All right, well, when that happens, maybe we'll bring you back and continue the conversation. Professor David Franklin, really appreciate your time this morning from DePaul's College of Law. Thanks so much. Thank you.